Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and today I'm going to be doing yet another presentation on the mushrooms that are found in Saskatchewan and the ways in which we go about identifying those mushrooms. So today we'll be looking at the uh, Slippery Jacks of Saskatchewan, though not all of them are called Slippery Jacks. So uh, the only genus that we'll be talking about in this presentation is Sewillus. So this is a very common group of species here. So what is a slippery jack? So these are actually poured bolletes that belong to the Sewillus genus. If you remember our, the presentation on bolletes, uh, that is uh, an agaric looking mushroom that when you flip it over, instead of having gills under the cap has uh, pores has a porous surface. So uh, they also have angular pores. They tend to occur in the fall and they tend to be mycorrhizal with conifers. So there's quite a few species here. So the first one we're going to look at are the slippery jacks. So these are Sewillus species and I've got two species here kind of lumped together. And that is the slippery jack Sewillus luteus on the left and the short stem slippery jack Sewillus brevipes on the right. So uh, the cap for both is dark brown to tan in coloration. They are convex, flattening out with age. The cuticles are smooth and slimy, kind of slimy when wet. And then as it dries, it becomes tacky and sticky and eventually they'll be fully dry but uh, that that often doesn't happen and that cuticle is also easily pulled off the margin is smooth and they're up to about uh, five inches in diameter for S. luteus and up to four inches in diameter for the smaller S. brevipes here are some size references for you both of them do grow slightly larger than what you're seeing here. On the left, that is Sewillus luteus. On the right, that is Sewillus brevipes. The pores are yellow to ochre in coloration, becoming tan with age. The pores are small and angular. They are adnate. They reach across and touch the stipe, as you can see there. The pores are covered with a thin membranous partial veil in Swillus luteus. So that's the slippery jack. Uh, there is no veil in Swillus brevipes. So what you're seeing on the right there is Swillus luteus because of that ring left over from the, the uh, partial veil. You wouldn't see a ring like that in Swillus brevipes. And there is a brown spore print in Swillus brevipes and an ochre spore print in Swillus luteus. So very similar in color. I mean, ochre to brown. Here's a close up of what you can expect of the pores. It's a kind of a honeycomb shape to them, angular, not round and circular so much. So the stipe ranges from white to cream to pale yellow for Sewillus brevipes, and then a white to pale yellow with a pattern of dots above the annulus and fibrillose and fibrous below the annulus there. And you can see that is on the right hand side. That's Sulus luteus on the right and Sulus brevipes on the left. Uh, they're cylindrical to clavate, both of them. They're up to about two inches high and a half inch wide for Sulus brevipes, uh, hence the name short stemmed slippery jack. And then up to four inches high and one inch wide for Sulus luteus on the right hand side there. They are solid and firm. And in Sewillus brevipes, uh, especially when young, you can find a fine white powder on the surface. So that would be pruinose. So the annulus on Sewillus luteus is brown, developing a purple stain directly below. You can see that purple there. Uh, it is 
pendant, you can see it hanging down, and is fragile, often tearing away, leaving only that purple ring zone where that stain was. And uh, yeah, once again, this only occurs in Suillus luteus. In terms of the ecology, these are mycorrhizal with pine trees, particularly in Saskatchewan. And you should expect them fairly frequently around jack pine. These are solitary to scattered or found sometimes in small groups. Usually I find them solitary or here and there. Uh, they occur late summer through fall. And these are terrestrial mushrooms. You can see there one of them is cut in half. So see those nice yellow tubes. In terms of their edibility, they're pretty good. Uh, have a mild taste. A lot of people are put off by the slimy cuticle up there. And uh, some people also have allergic reactions. So there's uh, a fairly high potential for, um, for allergies in these ones. And they do need to be thoroughly cooked. And you can really reduce the chances of that allergic reaction by re removing that slimy cuticle. Um, there must be something in that cuticle that acts as a, a, a purgative. Purgative, I guess, something that causes you to vomit. I don't. I never know if I'm saying words right. Probably not. This next species is the weeping bullete, Suillus granulatus. And if you look at that photo right there, and you see those beads of liquid underneath uh, on the pores, again, that's where the name is coming from. Weeping. The cap is brown to brownish yellow in coloration, kind of with a streaked appearance there that you can see. It's convex, flattening with age. The margin is smooth to the touch, but the cuticle is slimy when wet. And then when it's dry, it's kind of shiny and very reflective. Uh, it's up to four inches in diameter, so a good size mushroom. Not too big, not too little. There is a size reference for you. The pores are pale yellow, becoming ochre with age. Uh, it exudes drops of a milky liquid when young. And that we saw that in the initial photo there to introduce the mushroom. Uh, the pores are angular and medium sized. And they are adnate to maybe slightly to current sometimes. Here you're just seeing it adnate. You can see the dots there on the stipe as well. And uh, yeah, here's a close up again. You can see the angular pores. The stipe is cream to pale yellow in color. Uh, it is brown to ochre, or it has brown to ochre dots around the apex. And you can see that there as well. You can see that the, the pores are actually just starting to edge downwards onto the stipe. Uh, there's brown streaking at the base of the stipe. You can see that very clearly here. It is cylindrical. It is solid and firm and up to three inches high. These again are mycorrhizal with pine trees. So look for them in areas with jack pine and that tiny little area of the province with lodgepole pine. Uh, these occur midsummer through fall and they are found scattered or in large groups. So a, a bit more gregarious than the last species we looked at, the last pair of species. These are terrestrial, as you can expect with mycorrhizal mushrooms. Uh, in terms of their edibility, once again, they're good. Uh, often used to make mushroom preserves from what I can tell online. Um, I've never used them for such. I've, I've just only ever eaten them in soups and stuff. So they are good for soups and sauces. Once again, uh, they can cause reactions in some people, which you can lessen the chances of by removing the cuticle up top. Also, if it's an older uh, bullete or slippery jack, I just remove the pores as well. And um, this one is, again, known to bioaccumulate heavy metals. Don't pick them out of the parking lots of a factory, right? 
Next species is the Larch Bullete Suillus gravier. Gravillae. Don't don't know how to pronounce that. The cap is a uh, has a color range from yellow to yellowish red. Uh, it is convex, flattening with age, sometimes developing a small umbo up top, so that would be a little a little hump. Uh, the cuticle is smooth, and it is slimy when wet, as with quite a few of these slippery jacks. And it is shiny and tacky when dry. So the margin is smooth or slightly wavy with age. These are fairly large. They grow up to about six inches in diameter. There's a, I couldn't, I don't think I could find a proper size reference. So I put one with a nice big slug, very cute slug. Looks like he's chomping away. The pores are yellow that they, and they take on a reddish tinge as they, as they mature and age. Uh, it bruises rusty brown on the pore surface if you push your finger into it. Uh, the pores are angular, is adnate or slightly decurrent, which we uh, saw on the last one. Uh, they are covered with a thin partial veil when young. And there is an ochre spore print. Here are the pores. Once again, fairly fairly angular. Some of them look kind of rounded in this species. But uh, still has that honeycomb appearance, not just because of the color. Here you can see that staining uh, that, that we mentioned in the pores. You can see that brown staining there in the photo. Uh, so in terms of the stipe, it's pale yellow and smooth above the ring area and then covered in brown scaling below the ring zone. Uh, it is cylindrical, so the same, uh, the same width throughout. Uh, sometimes it curves. You can see this one is curved. And they're up to four inches high and one inch thick. Here's a close-up of that analysis. Uh, ring zone is left behind from a very small partial veil, so not really much of a, a ring, more just the ring zone uh, that catches the spores and creates uh, a spore-colored deposit there. You can see that ochre color. There you can see some wet ones and how slimy they are. Mm. Nothing like slime. Uh, these are mycorrhizal with larch, which does occur in Saskatchewan. Uh, they occur summer through fall. They are found scattered or in groups and are terrestrial. I guess that explains the name as well, Larch Bulletae or Larch Slippery Jack. In terms of their edibility, they're considered to be relatively poor. Uh, they cause adverse reactions in some people. Again, that allergy sensitivity thing. Uh, but uh, you can mitigate that by removing the cuticle. Uh, supposedly these are so mild that they could be best described as lacking in taste. So it's something that I might add to soups or to sauces so it could pick up the taste of uh, other components, right? Especially in a sauce. The blue staining bulletin very common one in Saskatchewan. This is Swillus tomentosus. So the cap is yellow or yellowish red in coloration. It is convex, flattening out with age. And at times it's kind of eccentric in shape, like if you look down on it, the profile. And that's what you're seeing here. I don't know if you could describe that as round, uh, so much as something trying to be round and failing at it. The cuticle is dry and covered in this gray or reddish sort of velvety felt that disappears with age and kind of leaves almost little patches of itself behind that disappear more or less as time goes on. 
The margin is smooth or broadly wavy and downturned. These bruise blue when damaged, and they're up to about six inches in diameter, but usually quite a bit smaller. Here's a size reference for you. That's kind of the size that you would expect to find the majority of them. So the pores are yellow, turning brownish with age. Uh, they bruise blue when damaged or bruised. And these are angular pores. They are adnext or adnate. So sometimes they do dip in a little bit. You can actually see this one is dipping in a little bit there. So when it comes to that stipe, instead of just touching it, it dips down to some extent. So the pores uh, produce a brown spore print, as do most of these mushrooms. Here we can see that, see a close up of the pores themselves, the openings of those tubes. The stipe is yellow to yellowish red. It's cylindrical, so the same width throughout. And then they stain blue when damaged. You can see the staining there starting to occur. Somebody's probably just run a fingernail across it just to de demonstrate that, that uh, component. And then these are up to about five inches high, one inch thick, but more often than not, they'll be quite a bit smaller than that. In terms of their ecology, these are mycorrhizal with lodgepole and jack pine. They occur midsummer through fall. They are found solitary or scattered, and uh, they're they're terrestrial. You know, their edibility is poor. Um, again, many people have allergies to this mushroom, and it has uh, an acidic taste, and I can attest to that. But uh, once again, you can you can add them to a sauce, and uh, they'll work just fine in that manner. You could see on the right hand side in that photo that uh, that kind of downturned enrolled margin that we were talking about in the first slide with the cap. This next one is the hollow bulletae, Suillus cavipes. This is a very unique looking species. The cap is yellowish brown to reddish brown. The cuticle is not slimy this time, but it's coated in brown hairy fibers. So it's tomentose, um, very much so. Uh, it may develop a shallow umbo that is darker in color. And then uh, the margin is lighter colored. You can see that margin there. It's almost cream or white, very distinctive. Uh, it, it is smooth when young. It becomes wavy later on as the mushroom flattens out or else it will have leftover veil fragments ha hanging down, so a pendiculate and even becoming upturned at times. So if you're looking straight down on this mushroom, it can be round or once again, it can be eccentric, just like we saw with, uh, with the last mushroom there. And then these grow up to about five inches in diameter. Here you have a size reference of a smaller one. And if you notice that stipe there, you can begin to understand why they call this a hollow bulletin or a hollow slippery jack. So the pores, these are pale yellow to greenish yellow in color and then they become uh, more of a tan color as it ages. Uh, they're very large. You can see them without any sort of magnification here. They're angular pores. Uh, they are adnate, sometimes becoming slightly decurrent. They are covered with a thin partial veil when young, and you can see the ring zone that kind of attests to that, and then they are, these produce an olive brown spore print. And yeah, there, there are the pores close up. You just see how big and um, 
noticeable they are. The stipe is yellow and smooth above the ring zone, become and becoming brown and hairy below. So you could almost call that a, a sheathing ring. We'll talk about that in a second, perhaps. So uh, this is a bulbous mushroom, so it's kind of lacking that there. Uh, the, the end, it looks like, broke off, but you would have a, a, a swelling at the end there. Uh, they're hollow in the base until about halfway up the stipe, so most the bottom half of that stipe will be hollow. And it's up to about three inches high and one inch thick, so it's actually a fairly thick stipe for only being three inches high. But uh, here's that annulus. It's kind of a white ring zone. It's left over from the partial veil, and then it's, it's, it, it appears to be more of a sheathing ring than anything else, as in it's, it's a continuation of the entire bottom up to there. And then you can see as well, the pores are starting to run down the stipe, and they're just stopped by the ring. Here we can see the wavy margin that we were talking about and how it's starting to turn upwards. Again, these are mycorrhizal with larch. They occur summer through to the fall. They are found solitary or scattered. And these are a terrestrial mushroom. Their edibility is relatively poor. Um, they require uh, long cooking times, again, uh, due to the potential for making you sick. So some people could also be allergic to this mushroom so you'd want to peel that cuticle off before cooking it again if you were going to try this mushroom just to to lower that chance and uh, as well if you did have a reaction you would lower the the uh, extent of that reaction this I believe is the last species in this presentation. This is the painted bulletin. I put a Suillus CF spectabilis. Um, so just a word on this mushroom before we start. I'm not actually sure if this is the uh, species of this mushroom. I do know that this um, used to belong to the Fusco bulletinus genus, which uh, was basically Basically, it's no longer valid. Everything that was in there has been moved over to Suillus, but I'm not exactly sure which species occurs in Saskatchewan, just that there is one species that looks like this that occurs in Saskatchewan that used to be in Fusco bulletinus. But there are actually several species that this particular mushroom, which I've seen photos of in Prince Albert National Park, uh, could belong to. So. The cap, uh, if, if it's one of these that goes under the name Painted Bulletin, would be burgundy to red in coloration, convex, flattening out with age. Cuticle has darker, fibrous patches and becomes slimy when wet, and the margin is smooth. Here's a size reference for the mushroom that I believe that this older mushroom that was... Uh, that was in the guidebook that that is called Mushrooms of the Boreal Forest uh, references. I've never seen it myself. The pores are yellow in color. They are angular pores, uh, large pores, as you can see there. Uh, they bruise pink. They are covered with a thin partial veil when young, and they produce a brown spore print. There are the pores. That's what you would expect from the stipe in this group of, of slippery jacks, uh, to be off-white with pink or red modeling below a ring zone. And then pale yellow above the ring zone, it would be cylindrical and up to three inches high and one inch thick, roughly speaking. There would be an annulus that is dark violet to black and more of a ring zone type annulus. And then again, uh, these mushrooms are mycorrhizal with larch or perhaps other, other uh, 
conifers as well. They occur midsummer through fall, and they are found scattered or in groups or clumps, and they are terrestrial. In terms of their edibility, most of the mushrooms that look like this, because this is its own special uh, group called the painted bullets or or such, they tend to be poor, they tend to be bland, and again, there there is that same adverse reaction that you find, so you'd want to peel that pretty cuticle off. And that's everything. Uh, there are likely other members of this genus in Saskatchewan. Um, it'd be interesting to see what else comes up in the future, because this is a a jack and jack pine and larch loving genus and we, we we certainly have an abundance of that so uh, if you like this presentation or the other presentations remember to hit the subscribe button and uh, I'll see you next time this is the mushroom wizard have a good night <laughs>